on this side, you're going to have X double bar, which is center line. So meaning that X double bar will be plus three sigma. Okay. For X double bar, this sigma will going to be X sigma X bar. Okay. On this side, the lower, the bottom part, just double bar minus three sigma X bar. So now we want to know how good is this chart. Okay, so we call it performance uh, matrix for the control chart. Okay, of course, this one we can simplify like we have discussed earlier, X double bar plus A2 R bar. Okay, so this one will be simplified. X double bar plus A2, A2 R bar. Okay, similarly also at the bottom. Eh? Okay, so that is just a, a review there. Okay, now, yeah, as I said, that when we does, when we does design control chart, we are okay. We want to see how good is the control chart of our what we designed. We decided uh, we decide the control limit. We decide sampling frequency. We decide sample size. So one measure that we use, okay, we call it. Average run length. Okay, average run length. Okay, this is a measure how good is our control chart. Okay, for short control chart, short control chart is meaning that the chart that we have seen, for example, X bar chart. X bar chart is short control chart. Okay, so um, ARL or what we call average run length is a measure how good is the control chart. So we have ARL1. Okay, this is Normally we call it ARL0. Okay, this is ARL0. And we have ARL1. Okay, what ARL is doing is ARL0 or ARL node here is referring to when a process is stable. When a process is stable, we are expecting there will be um, no. Um, no false alarm, no false alarm. Okay, just one minute, somebody coming uh, to deliver something. Okay, skip up, eh? Okay, sorry. Yeah. Uh, okay, so I say just now that the performer measure we have average run length. Okay, average run length. So apu maksud average run length. Okay, if you have control chart. Okay, let's say the process is stable. Okay, ARL node is for stable process. Okay, remember that ARL node is for stable process. A measure for stable process, meaning that process has no problem. Okay, but what happened is because of control chart is based on sampling, okay, there will be situation that there will be false alarm. Okay, apa yang berlaku is false alarm. Let's say the, the point is moving up and down. Okay, I, I, I pick this cross line is meaning that the observed data, observed data, observed data. So there might be the process is stable. Stable process, suddenly there will be one point here. Okay. This one point actually coming from several process, but because of sampling, okay, imperfection in sampling, so we have uh, what we call it false alarm. Okay, false alarm. False alarm, this is like when you are having no fire, but suddenly the alarm is ringing. Okay, false alarm. So ARL is a measure how long that the stable process we run until it, it, it is the first time that false alarm will trigger. Okay. 
So if you have this is, for example, this is number one, this is number two, number three, number four, number five, number six, number seven, number eight, number nine. Let's say this number nine is the trigger. But actually ARL for stable process is going to be very long. Okay. So if this is the case, um, okay. Okay, let, let me uh, make correction here. It will not be here. It's going to be very long. It's going to be very long. Maybe, okay, maybe on average, it's going to be, to be let's say, okay, let's say I put it three, 300. After running 300, average run, after run 300, you may have one point. Okay, so maybe you run another process. Okay, that might be happening not at 300, it might be happening at 400. Okay, maybe another process happening at 400. Okay, so maybe another another process is running at 350 and so on. But on average, ARL, we say the average run length. Okay, average run length. So if we have enough repetition, okay, we have enough repetition, we're going to have okay, 370. This is, uh, if you run simulation also, we can get this number. If we run random number simulation, so let's say the first one is 300. Okay, maybe the second one will be 400. Okay, the third one will be 350, meaning that the first time it will be uh, outside control limit. The, the process is stable, supposed to be every point is inside, but because of sampling, they might be having false alarm. They okay, might be having false alarm. So continue. Okay, maybe uh, another one going to hit at 410, but on average, if we add all these, if we have enough sample, let's say we have we have run the process 30 times or 40 times, 50 times. The, the more we have uh, sample is closer to 370, okay? So finally, on average, ARL for stable process, we call it ARL node is equal to 370. Okay, how theoretically we can prove this? Okay, theoretically we can approve it. Okay, I go back to our famous uh, normal distribution. Okay, we have our normal distribution. We have this. Huh? Okay, so we say that if we have plus minus three sigma. Okay, so you have this area outside this. This is considered going to be false alarm huh? outside. The process is stable. So you have three sigma here, okay, plus here. You have, okay, we are referring to the center here. So minus three sigma. Okay, so the area, the area under the curve okay, of this normal distribution, this area, okay, this area under this curve will be 99.73. Okay, I think everyone know about it now. Okay, 99.73. So this is meaning that if we have one minus 0 0.9973, Okay, this is our alpha actually. This is our our alpha. Or oh, in a way, probability. Eh? Probability one point of plot out of the control. Okay, we want to see what is the probability of having this. Okay, so meaning that one minus of the inside is going to be zero point zero zero two seven. Okay, so ARL. ARL node, it will be one over P. Okay, one over P, this one, huh? this one, one over P. P is this value, okay, this value and this value. So P divided by two, lah. we have two, two sided. So one over P, meaning the P here is one, zero point zero zero 
to 7. This is for stable process. Okay, what do you get this number? 1 over 0, 0.00 to 7. Okay, can somebody help me? Put in your calculator. A seven zero three seven zero three seven zero okay three seven zero so that's why three seven point three seven okay point three seven so we can round round off this so we can say three seven zero okay three seven zero also three seven zero is false alarm okay so on average if we run a stable process there will be one false alarm every three seven zero okay every false alarm. So process has no problem, but the control chart showing that one point outside. Understand, ke? boleh faham ke? The concept of performer measure for control chart is based on ARL. Hello, can you respond to, to the chat board whether you understand or not? Uh, doctor. Yes. Yang false alarm tu dia occur setiap 370 ke dalam range 370 yang next tu dia boleh jadi bila-bila masa. Yes, dia boleh berlaku any 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 anywhere but normally on average sama macam saya kata tadi maybe dia berlaku first time 3 300. Lepas tu you stop the process because you found out that there is nothing wrong with the process because of sampling it create false alarm and then you move on the process the next one maybe berlaku pula at the at, at 400. It's not going to be exactly 370. 370 is average. On average. Maybe the next one, you stop the process at 400 and then you investigate the process. Oh, nothing wrong. Actually, it was false alarm. You run the process again. Now it happened at 350. False alarm. And then you check, there is no problem. And then you continue running the process. So, maybe the number keeps fluctuating. Maybe sometimes you've got 470. On average, you take this all average, okay, you add all the number, add, 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 divide by how many, you get this on average, the rank length for the first alarm to happen, first time first alarm to happen, eh, after you, you done reset, you stop, you're going to get 370, this is the number. But theoretically, it is explained in terms of what is the area outside the control limit which is 1 minus 0 0.9973 is equal to 0 0.0027 because of probability of outside is p eh? 1 over p finally we also get this number this one is if you test it in real life you will get this but if you run simulation also we run simulation using random number also we got this number close to this number okay 370 if you run long enough enough sample okay you will get these 370 numbers okay so your question is whether it's going to be exactly or around this area. yes it, it fluctuate between 300 400 350 410 but on average is 370 is it clear yes okay so i don't know is there any relationship or not with mh370 Maybe consider, eh? What happened to MH370? Is it following this theory? Or somebody hijack the aircraft? No. <laughs> okay, it could be false alarm, eh? But anyway, it's a big loss. Okay, so maybe the number 370 is explaining the, the false alarm happening here. All right, so what happened if the process is a process is unstable. Let's say a process having problem. When a process is having problem, we want to to quickly detect as quick as possible. Okay, as quick as possible for a process to be detected, it is it is uh, out of control. Okay. So that that uh, stable process we use it. Uh, ARL 1, 1 minus 1 minus beta. Okay, this is for unstable process. Okay, unstable process. Stable process, sometimes you call it in control. Okay, 
unstable process, we call it out of control process. Okay, for unstable process, process already have problem. Okay, so a process having a problem, we want to detect as quick as possible that a process is having problem. Okay, so how to measure how quick? How quick it is being detected? We use ARL1, one minus, one minus beta. Okay, over here, one minus, this is the P value, eh? alpha. Sometimes they call it alpha. Okay, same, same thing. Eh? So in here, what we want is as long as possible. Okay, when the process is stable, it should be as long as possible. But when the process is unstable, we want it as quick as possible. Okay, so studies has been done uh, using simulation. What they do is, um, like this is the shift, eh? the shift, the shift in control chart. In the control chart, you have a shift. Okay, you have control chart, you have a shift. This is three sigma shift at this point. This is minus three sigma shift. Shift mean that, okay, your sample suddenly shift up. Okay, this is shifting, okay, shifting. So, um, we, we want to know how quick is the control chart to detect when there's a shift. There might be a shift of 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 1, 1.5, 2, 2.5, 3. Shift 3 meaning that immediately is out. Lah. Okay, so your control chart should be able to detect this. Okay, if there is shift 2, okay, somewhere here, okay, you have this is 2, this is 3, this is 1, 1 shift. If 1 shift here, okay, meaning that this this process shifted to this point. Okay. So what we want to see, how quick is the ARL okay, to detect the shift? Okay, the faster you can detect, it look it means a, a better control chart. So in here, uh, if if the shift is one, uh, let me see. I think this example is showing how quick it is, huh? uh, in terms of okay, k k sigma, k is this number. Okay, so k equal to 3, k equal to 0.5, k equal to uh, 2, k equal 1.5, k equal to 1, and so on. Okay, so 3 sigma, 2.5 sigma, 2 sigma, and so on. So average run length, okay? So, um, so we see that if the shift is... Uh, Let's say this one, eh? the shift is 3 sigma shift. Okay. And depend on n number, eh? this is n equal to 1, n equal to 2, n equal to n, n is sample size, eh? n equal to, and at different n, okay, at different n values. Okay. So we see here, uh, okay, how n value influence, how quick that we can detect. Okay, let me see, just take for example, ARL 10. Okay, let's say after 10, at the, at the point number 10, okay, who will uh, uh, hit faster? Okay, so if you have two sigma here, okay, two sigma here, this is two sigma, eh? and you have two sigma here, two sigma here, Okay, it shows that a bigger sample size, it is faster to detect. If you have only one, it's going to delay in terms of detect. See here, if you have two, n equal to two, you can detect at ARL equal to three. Okay, if you have n equal to one, this one, eh, this one, you, you need 10 points to detect. Okay, it delay. But if your sample size is uh, 16, okay, you're going to detect very fast. Understand or not how the sample size influence influence the the speed of detection of out of control. Hello, are you following me or not? The sample size influence, okay? The sample size influence how quick that you can detect out of control. So if you take more sample. Because we know that sample, I say just now, you can have four or five, right? Normally, people use four or five. If you take five or four, for example, 
Okay, you are detecting a shift of 1.5. Okay. Okay, where is the shift of 1.5? Shift of 1.5 will be in the middle of control chart. The middle half, eh? middle half. Okay, this is the middle. This is three. This is three. So now let's say you are running a process. It's running. Suddenly the shift is happening like this. Okay. So then there will be a point will be outside. Eh? Will be outside. So this shift. Okay. Assuming this shift is, uh, let's say I take this easy number here two. Okay. Let's say the shift here is happening at two. Okay, the shift from here to here. Okay, let's say this is happening at two sigma shift. Okay, so meaning that this line. Okay, this line. Okay, the shift is two sigma. So what I'm comparing is if I use n equal to two, okay, I will need Okay, more than two. Uh, if 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 I use n equal to two, okay, the first time I will detect, okay, detect this it will be two point five, a point which is two point five. Yeah, okay, there will be something there. Okay, on average, okay, consider is quite fast, eh? quite fast. But if you use only one one n equal to one. Okay, you will detect only after this point. You will detect. You will detect after seven. Okay, at seven, meaning that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Only here you can detect. Okay, it takes longer time to detect. Okay, longer time to detect if you have small n. Okay, n equal to one. But if I take bigger n, for example, I take n equal to sixteen. Okay, this is n equals 16. It's a lot, you know. Every sample you take 16. Okay, normally we take only 4 and 5, but now let's say we take 16. You're going to detect immediately. The first time they're out, okay, we already detect. Okay, so n will influence the detection of ARL 1. Okay, same also actually for ARL. ARL zero, there's no issue because the process is stable. Okay, there is no issue. But this is already we say three seven zero. Okay, the process is stable. But when the process is unstable, it depends on instability. How much is unstable? Is it zero point five sigma? Is it one point zero sigma? One point three sigma, and so on. Right. I I hope that you get the idea how we can evaluate performance of control chart. Okay, so it's good to have more sample taken, but actually more sample ta taken is costly. Okay, because every time we take sample, we do testing on the sample, it is costly. But that's why some people try to use a small sample size. Okay, another measure, we call it average time to signal. Average time. Okay, now we are looking at the time. So ATS equal to ARL multiplied by H. What is H? H is equal space interval of time okay maybe you say i take sample every half an hour so h will be half an hour okay let's say your arl is 10 okay 10 multiply every half an hour you take sample 30 minutes okay so you mean that average time to signal will be 300 minutes every 300 minutes you can expect that the signal of uh, unstable will be triggered. Okay, so this is when we express in terms of time. Also, we can express in terms of number of individual unit sample, which is I. Okay, I, N is number of individual unit, multiply ARL. So we can express differently. Right, okay, let me move on to another control chart. Okay, any question before I move on to S chart? Okay, we have seen X bar chart, R chart, but now we move to S chart. Okay, S chart is standard deviation chart. Okay, standard deviation. The okay, S, if you take sample sometime for population, you take it as sigma. Okay, for sigma. 
Okay. So although X and R are widely used, occasionally it is desirable to use standard deviation. Okay, it's desirable to use standard deviation. Okay. Standard deviation chart. Okay. So this is where we use S. Okay. So we couple X bar and standard deviation chart instead of uh, X bar and R. R is a range. Okay, range chart. Okay. So why we use S? Okay. Uh, this is because Okay, we want to have a better accuracy because S chart is more accurate. In order to use S chart, N must be moderately large, which is greater than 10. Okay, greater than 10. Meaning the sample size we take should be greater than 10. Okay. So, uh, and the sample size if the sample size is variables, okay, we can also use S chart. Okay? Sample size is variable, meaning that sometimes we take 10, sometimes we take 8, sometimes we take 15. We can use S chart. Okay? We can use X chart. Okay. Um, How, how do we how do we prepare this x x uh, x bar and x chart okay so we have to understand this theory okay construction of x bar and s chart okay so as usual what we do is we take 25 sample okay 25 sample which is this is actually the g lah, the g yeah okay? in the book it call it sample so uh, we have calculated the sample average and sample standard deviation for 25 okay, sample. Okay, so okay, let me show. I think in terms of example, maybe easier for you. Eh? Okay, let's say this is example of data taken. Okay, inside diameter measurement of automobile engine piston ring. Okay, piston ring. So we have sub. Sample number, okay. Sample number one, or this is basically is a G value, okay. The G, okay. G, G equal to in this case the G is equal to twenty five. See, we have twenty five here. So twenty five subgroup, okay. Twenty five. Twenty five subgroup. Okay, we have here one observation. Huh? So let's say sample number one we take at in the morning, 8 a.m. So we are taking n equal to 5. Okay, this one is n equal to 5. Okay, so sometimes people get confused uh, when calculating the average. So the average should be you take all this number, okay, all this should be plus in order for us to get the average X bar, okay, X bar. So this is what you get, the average of these five values, you get 74. See, this is X bar, okay. When you go for, for example, 9 a.m., you take another five, okay. So this is the average value for X bar. So we have X bar here. We have the S here. Okay, the S. S is standard deviation for sample. We continue doing this. Okay, continue doing this for 25. Okay, for 25. So until here. You do the same thing. You get it here. Okay, this is the X bar. Because we are now using X bar uh, S. Okay. So how to get S? Okay, this is standard deviation. SI, eh? SI, SI mean that meaning that this is S1, this is S2, okay, and so on. So the S is given by this formula. Okay, this is the how to get the S, which is a standard deviation for that um, 
for that five sample. Okay, is it enough or not to have, according to guideline, how many sample we should take? How should, what should be the end? The guideline says. And ten, more than 10. More than 10. But how come in this example, you give only five? Because just academic example to make it easy. Okay. And should be greater than 10. Okay. Don't confuse. Huh? In this example, they give you only five because why to make it simple? Okay. To make it simple. It should be 10. Okay. Not five. But it shows you five by because to make it simple uh, calculation. Okay. But it should, should be 10. Okay. Assuming that, assume that n is enough. Huh? We have to assume that n, assume n is sufficient. Okay. Sufficient to use as chart. Okay. Sufficient to use as chart. So how to get how to get uh, S then? So S is coming from here, which is the observed value for everyone eh? minus X bar square summation of those divided by N minus one. So what you do is, okay, in this case, you already have this number, okay, 74, okay, the S1, okay, I'm referring to the first number, eh? I'm referring to this number, I'm referring to this Okay, S1, okay, the S1 equal to 74, okay, 0 0.03 minus, okay, minus the average here, 74. Okay, this number, the average here, 74.01. Okay. And then we continue, we continue okay, using this formula, using this formula, okay? This formula, okay? So we continue summation of that. So don't forget to get the square here, okay? So the next number is 74. Okay, point, point zero, zero 0.002. Okay, minus 74.01. Okay, you square that and continue. Continue until you get the last value. Okay, the last value is 74.008. Okay, minus 74. Point zero one. Okay, you square that. Okay, divide by. Okay, divide by. So you have here divide by n minus one. Okay, in this case is n is five. Okay, so five minus one. Okay, so now you get this as one. Okay, as one. So repeat the same. Of course, uh, manually is going to be tedious, lah, but if you put it in Excel, you just copy the formula, you get that or the answer. Okay, continue this. And then what you need to get is the averages, okay, the average of the average of uh, S, okay, S bar. Remember, this is S bar. S bar is the average of S, okay, average of S. So, okay. Um, So the formula that we use to develop the control chart is this one. Okay, this is uh, S chart. Um, okay, so this you also can use the standard values. Okay, this is coming from table. This is B, B6 and B5 is coming from table. That also can simplify our preparation. Okay, so you can have this is, this is for S chart, eh? for S chart. Okay, the center line will be C4 sigma, or sometimes we call this the average of S, S bar, eh? the S bar. Okay, 
So you can have this B6. Sigma. And this is B5. Sigma. Okay. So this one is C4 Sigma. Okay, um, there are times where um, we need to, to use estimated value. For example, when there is no standard is given for this sigma, okay? So we use this, like what we did uh, in this case, eh? in this case, we don't have value, we can estimate this, okay? We estimate this as, as bar there, eh? okay? So it's estimated, okay? Summation of this, divide by how many subgroup we have. In this case, M is uh, the number of subgroup. Eh? Sometimes I call it G, it's the same. Eh? So where normally we use it from preliminary sample when the process is still unstable, okay? So when the process is stable, we can use this value. Yeah, this value. This is for a stable process, or, or sometimes we call it for a revise. Okay, this is for a revise, for a revise S chart. Okay, S chart. Same thing that we do for X bar chart. We discard the unstable data and we recalculate again the new. Okay, the new limit. So. This is, if we plot, if we plot, it will look like that. This is S bar. This is B4, S bar. Based on estimated data, estimated data. And this is B3, S bar. Okay. So remember that when we do control chart, first we have trial, the trial. After we remove the assignable cost, we revise. Okay. We have a revised control chart. Okay, the same thing also for S chart, eh? S chart, X chart, R chart. Also going through the two phases. Okay, phase one is trial, second phase is revise. So for the revised one, we can use this one. How to get this? The important part here is how to get S bar. Okay, S bar here. S bar here is this one, okay? Where the summation of S, okay, we have considered removing the unstable or out of control data, out of control data. So, okay, um, okay. So for X bar chart to be used together with S chart, okay, we are using this formula, A3 S bar. Okay, remember this is not R bar, S bar. So it's going to be X double bar for upper control limit plus A3 S bar. Previously in up in, in X bar chart, okay, X bar and R, what we use was X bar plus A2 R bar. Okay. But this is S chart. This is in the case of X and S. Okay. So the bottom part is minus. Okay. Minus lah. The difference only this minus. Okay. This one is positive. Okay. Same thing also here. Plus minus. So this is A3. This is A2. For the case of X chart. Nah. Okay. So for S chart. We already have it here. Okay. This is S chart. B4 S bar, B3 S bar. Okay, let's see this example here. Construct an X bar and S chart using piston ring inside diameter of the table 63. Okay. Table 63 is already given earlier. 63. Eh? This is 63. Yes. This data is given. 
okay, after measuring 25. Okay, in your books, this G is they call it M, the M, same thing, eh, subgroup. So this is N equal to five, and the S, X bar, already taken here, average here, X double bar, S, okay, individual S, and then finally S bar here, okay? So, based on this data, okay, X double bar, we get this, finally, this is the, the central line, okay? So, we need that we have center line for this chart, X double bar, equal to 74.01, okay? So, and S, also, we have calculated the 0 0.2351, okay? 2351, if you look at here, 2351, okay? This number, okay? You have 2351, okay? 2351, yeah. Okay, so divide by 25, you're going to get 0 0.0094. So, so, okay, you see here, you get it. So you get now X bar, and you already get X double bar, and also you got S bar. So now we are ready to provide X bar chart, okay? Using this formula, see this formula? Okay, very simple, eh? simple formula, simplified, okay? K3 S bar. Okay, A3 from table, you can get this number, okay? And the difference here is this is positive, this is negative, okay? So, so, okay. So that is X, X, X bar chart with S, but now S chart, okay? The S chart, so we have B4, S bar. So this is what you get now, this value. B3 S bar is the value, okay? So plot the chart, okay, and now it's given. So it's, it shows that in this, this chart, there is no out of control. So this limit could be adopted for a phase two monitoring, okay? So there is no point outside, okay? No point outside control limit. Okay, this X bar, this is S chart. Okay. So actually in control chart for R and S, if the point is below, it shows it's good performance. Okay. We want it R value and S value, uh, a low value. Okay. A low value is good okay. because it shows that low variability. All right. We can also estimate, okay. uh, we can estimate the process standard deviation. For example, we want to know what is the process standard deviation. We can use this formula. Okay, I explained this earlier in uh, okay, using process capability. We can estimate that this value of okay, sigma, sigma topi, okay, can be estimated from S bar. We already have the S bar divided by C4. C4 is from table. So now we can estimate the process standard deviation. Okay, the sigma mean process coming from the uh, estimate the population okay okay so in this case uh, is given as 0 0.001 okay if you use if you use uh, if we use s bar we're going to get 0 0.009 okay so this is a uh, uh, slightly bigger uh, slightly bigger compared to uh, estimate uh, s bar so sigma cap is slightly bigger because we have this correction factor, which is C4. All right. Uh, okay, I stop here for 10 minutes. Come back at 11, at 12.02. Is okay? So we go back to the same example. Okay, now the issue is um, what happened if we have variable, if we have variable sample size. Remember that earlier we have sample size of five, right? But now there are situations where sample size is not constant. Okay. So in this case, we still can use S X bar S chart. 
if we look at this example here, and this is so one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so the first subgroup here we have five. Okay, we have five, but the second subgroup we only have one, two, three. We, we don't have sample number five, four, number five. No, no sample. Okay, but still we can calculate the x bar and s. Eh? We still can calculate, calculate, but now it's not consistent. This is n equal to five. Okay, in this case, n equal to three. Okay, the next one is again at n equal to five. Okay, if you go to this one, you don't have this number here. So this one, n equal to four. Okay, how do we handle this case? Okay, how do we handle this case where sample size is not constant? Okay, sample size is not constant. So this is what this example 6.4 is trying to show. Okay, variable, sub, variable sample size. Okay, so the sample size vary from three to five. Okay. So we can use a procedure earlier okay, to set up the X bar and S, but we have to recalculate again. Okay, recalculate again the X double bar because now it is become going to change. Okay. So the grand mean and weighted average standard deviation are compute. Okay. Okay, using the earlier uh, formula. Okay, so we have to have now not only all five. Eh? There are, there are five, there are three, there are four, and so on. So we have to recalculate again. So now the total sample we have taken for this is only one, one, three. Okay, one, one, three. Earlier it was 25 multiplied by five. You're going to get originally it was uh, 125, right? 125. Originally 125, but now the remaining only 113. Okay, the summation 13, and the total here also different now. Okay, so we get a new center, but luckily I think the center is the same. Huh? Just for the sake of example, they give you the same number, 7401. Okay, 7401 happen to be the same to make it easy. Okay, but anyway, the procedure is important here. We just follow the procedure. We have to calculate uh, the total based on what we have. Okay, the total what we have. So in here, they call it the, uh, to get an X double bar, five multiplied by 74, three multiplied, because they are getting this number, uh, average. average number. But you can also just summation of everything also can, summation of all the numbers, and then divide by 113, also can, okay, also can. So this way they put it three multiply, uh, I think four, uh, no, sorry, this is five, five multiplied by 74.01. Three multiplied by 73.996, but this is already taken the average. Okay, so there are several ways of doing it. Okay, so this is, don't confuse, huh? but the inside here is the averages, okay, the average. So finally you get this X double bar. Okay, X double bar. Okay, same thing also for S bar. Okay, so the S bar, we just recalculate again the remaining uh, data that we have. Okay, there are five, there are three, and so on. Okay, so this is a new one. And then uh, put it into the formula. Okay, for X bar chart. This is for the X bar chart. And this is for S chart. Okay, this is for X bar chart. This is for S chart. Okay. So, um, okay, so now when we plot, okay, you may see that there is differences than the earlier one. Eh? What do you observe in this in this chart? This is using variable sample size. What do you observe here? Variable sample size. How is different than the earlier chart? 
You notice anything? Uh, the dash. Yeah, you have here is the dash. The dash here is actually showing control limits. Okay, so it's very tedious to have control limit for every sample. Okay, so the dash actually is showing the control limit. So this is upper control limit. This is lower control limit. So you see that every sample here have this control limit, this control limit, this control limit, this control limit. See? So this control limit. So every sample has control limit. Same thing also here. Okay, in this in this case, as chart, as I mentioned earlier, upper control limit is more important. Okay, lower control limit is not important eh, because the lower you go actually is the better because this is uh, dispersion. We want a small dispersion. We're concerned about upper control limit. Okay, so this is control limit for sample number one, for sample number two, sample number three. This is very tedious unless you put it in computer. Okay, for whatever sample. So there are two ways of handling this. One way is we take individual. Another way is we take N average. Also can. We take N average. And this N average will be used in the formula. Okay, another method. And the one method is to do it individually. Another method is take the N average. Okay, another method is take n average red instead of n individually. So if you take n, n average, okay, you may have just one line. And also, also here maybe one line. This is coming from n average rather than n individual. Okay, rather than, than individual. So you see how tedious it is here. Okay, whatever sample size. You're going to have lower control limit, upper control limit. Okay, for individual, see it's different here. But put on computer, it's okay. Let's just uh, one button press. Okay, one, one button press is you can get all this control limit. But if you want to do it manually, okay, maybe take half an hour just to calculate this. Okay, same thing also here. Okay, that's why you get what you say dash. Then the control limit now look like a dash. Okay, so this is the case where control limit is used. Variable control limits. Control control. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, variable uh, sample size. Okay. So an alternative method that I mentioned just now is using average sample size, which is n bar. Take an average or n bar, n average. So instead of calculating individually, for every sample have their own. Uh, control limit. So you take the n average and use use that n average in calculation of um, control limits. Okay. So using variable width of control limit and x bar and s, s control chart is to base the control limit calculation on average sample size n. Okay. Control limit calculate based on uh, n here. Okay. So if and I are not very different, this approach may be satisfactory. Okay, what it means that if we have four or five, not much different, we can take the average. But what happens if the n is, there are some n equal to four, another n is 10, another n is maybe 15. So this is very big difference. So this is not advisable to use average. Average is good if the sample size are uh, not much different, okay? Not much different. So since average sample size n may not be an integer, useful alternative is based on approximate control limit. Okay, so sometimes you may not get, when you take the average, may not get a round number, okay? So try to, you can use it um, uh, integer number, which is uh, as approximate, okay? For the uh, sample size. Okay, so we use approximate control limit. So this is uh, to simplify the preparation. Okay, so in the case of S, you can use this formula, estimate the value of sigma. Okay, 
which is the sigma is the estimate of as average divided by S four C four eh, as what we have seen earlier. Okay, there are other chart S two chart. I'm not going to cover on this S two chart. Okay. in control chart. So, uh, what we call non-random pattern. Okay, non-random pattern. Okay. So, what are the non-random pattern that we have? We have cycle pattern or cyclic pattern. Okay. These are common pattern. Eh? Common pattern when you are using control chart. Okay. What I mean is when you have control chart. Okay, the pattern of the process might be fluctuating. Okay, it is within control limit. Okay, but it's fluctuate like this. So, if we connect the line, it just look like this. Okay, so this is showing something. What happened to this? Possible reason for this is, uh, okay, it is going to cycle. It's due to perhaps the maintenance schedule already uh arrive that we need to do maintenance or maybe operator the workers already get fatigued maybe in the morning is working very well in the afternoon his performance is down okay or also maybe tool wear okay tool wear so um okay um Systematic variability, okay. For example, maybe due to on off cycle, okay. On off cycle, sometimes it is a cycle is 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 in in, in good situation, sometimes it is out of um, the regular setting, so it's going to show cyclic or also can be cyclic due to temperature change in the morning. Maybe okay in the afternoon is going to be hot. Okay, toward the end of the day is going to cool down again. Okay, or maybe something is losing, loose. Okay, loose, loose in term of uh, a component which is joined. For example, you join using, um, okay, maybe using screw or maybe using uh, using uh, anything that can join two parts. Okay, so the cyclic showing that is that component, the mating part is wobbling, for example. Okay, we may also have mixture, also can also have shift. Okay, that are contrib contribute by different, different source. Okay, so graphically, we can see here. This is within control limit. Okay, control limit, within control limit, but it is showing like this. It's showing like this. So this is cycle. So what causing this cycle? Okay, as I said just now, there are possibilities. It could be fluctuation in temperature. It could be something is losing. Okay, the joint is loose. So we need to tighten again so that that wobbling is going back to to the uh, original state. Or maybe mixture. Mixture is when you have, for example, two material coming from two different supplier. One supplier producing this, another supplier producing this. So you may get okay, a mixture pattern. Okay, this is showing the mixture of this part, and this also mixture of this part. Interpretation of this process variation is very useful eh, because we want to make correction. We if we get the right root cause, and then we can solve the problem. If we wrongly interpret, we cannot solve the problem. Okay, this one is showing the shift. Okay, the process is shifting. You see here there is a group of uh, variability. This is another group. Okay, so what it means that if we take the average, this is one average, this is another average. So in this one, it is shifting. Okay, shifted to here. Okay, a shift happened. So what are the possible reasons for this shifting? Okay, this shifting is could be okay change of method. Okay, maybe the workers that is operating in the morning change to another new workers. So shift changing the workers create a shift. Okay, maybe 
uh, due to material. Okay, it could be into the machine, and there are many possibilities. Eh? And also, a shift also can be due to a broken, a tool is broken. Suddenly, you can see there is a shift in the pattern. Okay, it could be broken tools. Okay, okay, what happened to the trend? Okay, the trend is easily described when there is one out, gradual wearing out. Okay, how's Lani Mane? Deterioration. Okay, the tooling is deteriorate. Okay, so slowly deteriorate. House Malaku, eh? the house and Malaku is slowly deteriorate. Okay, so make, making that diameter that we produce getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Okay, so a trend like this. Okay, sometimes the trend also can go down. Okay, the trend is moving down. Why we need to capture this trend? Because before it hit the control limit, we should stop the process. Okay, that is important to identify the control limit. So before this, you uh, know we, we, we study that one point out of control limit, but actually it's not enough to monitor process variability only based on one point outside control limit. We also need to see unnatural pattern. So we call this unnatural pattern. Unnatural pattern. If the process is stable, the pattern is natural. If the process is unstable, we call it unnatural pattern. Unnatural pattern is contributed by assignable cause. Okay? We call this assignable cause. There are assignable costs contributing to unnatural pattern. And as assignable cost is cost that we can determine. Lah. Kita boleh cari ya, kita boleh cari assignable cost. And we can eliminate the cost. Okay, assignable cost. And another cost is we call it random cost. Random cost we cannot eliminate. Okay, it's, it's, it's there in the process. So understanding of this uh, pattern is important. Eh? There is a pattern also we call it stratification. Okay, stratification is normally very close to the center line. Okay, stratification. Uh, okay, so this is example of stratification pattern. Okay, this is control limit. This control limit. So stratification happen very close to the center. So it looks good. Actually, the process is having problem. Okay, it is look very good because it is far from uh, control limit, far from control limit, but it is not showing a, a natural variability. Okay, so if we continue having this, okay, uh, at the end it will create a bigger problem. Okay, we call this method of uh, pattern. This pattern is stratification. Okay, stratification. So where it's cluster artificially around the center, okay? Cluster artificially, it means that something is pushing this uh, process to be on the center. It could be built out of, maybe in machining, the build up of the waste material stuck to the cutting tool. The cutting tool got stuck, okay? Got stuck and then finally it might create uh, overheated and then broken, okay? It doesn't fluctuate up and down naturally, but artificially it looks like good. But after some time, the build up of the uh, waste material on the tooling and then get hot and then finally broken. Okay, so we need to know whether this is natural variation or unnatural variation. Okay, it can be misleading, eh? it can be misleading. It looks good, actually, it is artificial only. Okay, so artificial around the center. Okay. So we know that there is mark of lack of natural variability. Okay, we want it natural variability. Okay, so in case of stratification, it is not natural. It's not natural. So okay, any questions so far? So okay, this can be automated. Okay, we can use automated to recognize this because our eyes cannot detect this pattern, especially in automated, eh? automated system. So in automated uh, system, 
okay, we need to use computer to recognize this. So we can have it, uh, okay, like automated SPC, smart SPC, or we can even use artificial intelligence to train. Okay, artificial intelligence can be used to recognize this pattern. Okay, for example, using neural network. Okay, maybe industrial or mechanical engineering student maybe not so familiar with this. This is, uh, we borrow the techniques in computer science. Okay, use artificial intelligence to recognize pattern. Okay, to recognize pattern. Or pattern recognition. Okay, you see nowadays people are talking about industry 4.0 using AI, okay, using robotic, using internet. So this is one of the application of shapes they recognize okay, different uh, features of products for visual or vision inspection and so on. Okay. All right, any questions so far? Essence runs rule, okay, also can be used, okay, Nelson runs rule, okay, runs rules. Okay, runs rule also a method that we can use to recognize variability within control limit, okay, so to detect uh, unnatural variation. Okay, and natural variation. Okay, and natural variation within control limit. Within control limit. Okay, when I say control limit, I'm referring to upper control limit, okay, lower control limit, okay, so the rules is we call it, in your ebooks, they call it synthesizing rule, okay, this is like runs rule, same, huh? runs rule or synthesizing rule, okay, so this, we use this rule, why, to make it more sensitive, control chart become more sensitive having synthesizing rule, okay, more sensitivity, okay, so there are Nelson runs rule. Okay, this is some uh, variation of rules. Huh? Nelson runs rule. There are also we call it uh, uh, Western Electric runs rule. Okay, so what happened in this runs rule? Okay, there are um, okay. I'm uh, not sure why it's not here, eh? but I think there is, uh, yeah, there is rule. There is rule here. Okay, synthesizing rules. Okay, Western Electric runs rule. So there are overlapping, eh? some because different uh, researcher, scientists, they come up with a different set of rules, but in this book, they compile it, make it synthesizing rule. Okay, the easiest rule that we use so far is one, or more point outside control control limit. So what happened is we have this control limit, upper control limit, and lower control limit. Okay, in this rule, this rule uh, only okay in this rule only consider one point outside control limit. Only this outside. Okay, this is rule number one, rule number one. But actually, there are more rules, but the rules is considering a point inside, okay, a point inside. Before this, I say there is a pattern. Also can we use that to identify unnatural variation, but we can also use runs rule when the point is inside, okay? When the point inside, we also can use runs rule to see unnatural variation, okay? To see unnatural variation. Okay, um, let's see rule number two. 
rule number two is two of three consecutive point outside the two sigma. Okay. This is the meaning here is we divide this. We divide this. Okay, let me exaggerate here a little bit. Okay, let me put a bigger area. Tak boleh. Tak boleh capu pula. Okay, that one. Okay, anyway, okay, let me change the color to make it clearer. Okay, if I use blue, okay, let's say I have this line, okay. Remember, three sigma above, three sigma at the bottom. So, if this is three sigma, this dash line will be two sigma. Sometimes they call it a warning line, eh? warning, 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 eh? warning, amaran. And I have another one here. This is, wow, oh, hilang pula. Okay. Okay, just straight line, okay. This is three. This is two. This is three. I have another line here. Okay, this one sigma. Okay, the same thing also we divide the line into three at the bottom, three at the above. Okay, the central line. So this is one sigma, two sigma, three sigma. Okay, rule number one is clear. Rule number two says, Two of three consecutive point outside the two sigma warning limit, but still in control limit. So meaning that you have two point like this, huh? two point. Maybe the earlier point is here. So two point outside. So when you connect here, you have this line, this line. So two point here. So out of three, two point outside the two sigma. So this also showing that process is unstable. Okay, process is unstable. By looking at three point, we can say that the, the process is unstable. Okay, provided that it is two point beyond two sigma. Same thing also might be happening here. Okay, this two sigma maybe out of three point. Okay, earlier point maybe here, and two point is here. Okay, so this also showing a process is unstable. This is rule number two. Rule number three says four of five because it's point beyond one sigma. Okay, beyond one sigma. So we have one sigma is here. So from five point. Okay, let's say I change the color here. Okay, out of five, okay, you have one. Okay, you may have another point here. You have this point, this point. Already one, two, three, four. Okay, this one not yet, eh? not yet, because you need four of five outside beyond, beyond one sigma. So beyond now is only three. So if you get one more out of five point here, Okay, one, two, three, four. So the process also unstable. Okay, this is what is we call it runs rule or synthesizing rule. Okay, rule number four, a run of eight consecutive point on one side of the center. Okay, this is center. If eight point is one-sided, it's also considered as unstable. Or maybe the upper side or lower side, okay? So six point in a row steadily or increasing or decreasing. Okay, if you have six points steadily, let's say it's steadily, steadily moving down. Okay, let's say this point. Six point. 
keep that keep moving down 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 okay so this is also unstable or if you have 15 point in a row in zone c which is both above or below um, the center line 50 point in a row in zone c okay we divide this into three area three area we can have this uh, uh, okay we divide this into zone eh, into zone okay let me see the leveling of the zone Okay, the leveling of the zone. I hope I have this diagram. It's not here. Okay, I can I can just easily Google this. There is a lot of material on this. Okay, if you Google. You can see this runs rule, eh? runs rule. Okay, let me find the right one, the clearer one. Run through. Down soon, run through. Okay, uh, do you see what I'm sharing now? Hello, nampak tak? Nampak tak, sir. Okay, so you see here, okay, how this, all the point is inside control limits. Eh? You see here, you have this zone A, zone C, uh, we have So uh, test A, B, C, eh? A, B, C, hold on. I think that one is not so clear. Uh, okay, there is a diagram showing that how you can divide into this area. Okay, I think this, this one is a bit blur, but it is explain what I've just shown just now. We don't this 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 line, this this chart. Okay, so you see here, okay, this is this is center line this is control limit again so when you have three point okay beyond two sigma so much as it is one two three dual but under the uh, above two sigma okay this is considered unstable process this is rule number one this is rule number one again one point greater than this so another point that is four out of five okay Four out of five above one sigma. Okay, dalam case ni lah. One, two, three, four, five. So above one sigma, 
this is one sigma region. But this is this this is this is one sigma, this is two sigma, this is three sigma. So you have four point one, two, three, four out of five. So process also unstable. Okay. The other rule says that eight point, eight point above central line. So this is central line. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, more than eight lah. Dalam kes ni ya, eh? dia nak eight saja. Above, dia tidak, kalau natural, natural fluctuation, dia mesti ada atas dan pergi ke bawah. Ke bawah central line ni, one point go up and then go down. Okay, up, down, up, down. You cannot be more than two. Okay, if, if you have two continuously, okay, macam ni, eh? it's already unstable. So the point should go down. Okay, to the other half of the control limit. Okay, so this also happened in this case, eight point, but on the one side. Okay, on the one side. So some 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 rule, some diagram is divided by A, B, C. Macam tu. Tapi in this case, they divide by one sigma, two sigma, three sigma. So A, B, C is only just labeling lah. Uh, okay. Ah, yeah. This is this is the one that. Labeling using A, B, C. Okay, instead of label this A as 3 sigma, they kata this is zone A, this is zone B, this is zone C. Okay, zone C, zone B, zone A. Okay, is it on this, how we can use runs rule, how pattern can be used to recognize unstable process within control limit? Is it okay? Hello. Okay, doctor. All right, good. Okay, so I think our time also finished. So before I end, okay, I would like to hear from you, okay, whether you understand or not what I discussed today. Okay, can we have Fatiha? Fatiha, okay, what do you understand from today's lecture? Ada ke Fatiha? Nama ada ni. Orangnya ada tak? Okay, Ar Arya Rafi Supatro. Okay, what you learn today? Can you summarize? Okay, anyone, please, please help me. Okay, to summarize what you learned today. Uh, can I do that? You dah banyak kali, kan? Minta orang lain. <laughs> boleh, boleh, boleh. Okay, bagi cian orang lain. Okay, Faiz. Ada Faiz? Okay. Ah, okay, Faiz. Uh, so, for today, uh, I learn about the S-chat. Okay. And also, when uh, we have variable samples, we have the dash lines. The dash person, line too is uh, is control control limit lah okay uh, dash lines okay. and and then the the detection for unstable okay what I we think, call this what well, I think is western ah, I forgot runs rule okay uh, western electric western electric runs rule 